you. I'm going to bring in Chuck Marino now, former Secret Service agent and former DHS advisor. He is now the CEO of Sentinel Security Solutions. Uh, Chuck, always good to see you. There are protests all the time. There is nothing new about what we're seeing. But um, the locations and sharing exactly where they are going to be, um, that does add a, another element to this. Yeah, it sure does. You know, Marnie, uh, protection has evolved, especially in this day and age where information moves at the speed of the internet and social media. So it's not uncommon for a VIP or protected person to have their photo taken in a public spot and for that photo to be put out with the specific location on the internet. We understand that when providing protection. This is different. This is tied to a contentious issue coming out of the Supreme Court. You've got the language and rhetoric coming out of some members of the House and the Senate. Um, and then you've got this group now offering a bounty for the specific locations of the conservative justices. And what this is calling for is a response in mass. This is being called for to disrupt right? The, the peaceful conducting of everyday life by the justices and therefore is calling for intimidation. Now, we know that there's a federal law for the residences of the justices to protect them from protesters for intimidation. That law has not been enforced to date by the Department of Justice, which coincidentally oversees the U.S. Marshal Service, which is the agency providing the protection for the justices. So that's the confusing point, number one. The second point is when they are in public places, where does that authority fall? Well, it falls to local authorities and will basically fall to a harassment charge uh, or an illegal protesting without a permit and those laws are not generally enforced. We'll talk about the manpower and really the price tag to protect the justices beyond their home. So if every time they go out for a lunch or a dinner, how many people are gonna be involved to make sure that they're safe, especially if their location is being given out to the masses? Yeah, well, what I can tell you is protection is never cheap. It's a very expensive operation. It requires extensive manpower for 24 seven protection. And then there's the extended protection that you referred to earlier that was just approved by the House and the Senate, which extended the protection to their family members and rightfully so. But you know what, what the US Marshals and the, the Supreme Court justices don't come with are the statutory authorities that you see with the Secret Service and the president. So for example, you're not gonna be able to shut down streets like the Secret Service does for the president when they're dining inside of a public place like a restaurant. That just doesn't exist. They're smaller, they're nimbler, and as a result, they have to really pay a lot more attention to this because they don't control as much as the outside perimeter as some of these larger protection details too. So it's concerning. Well, and you don't know who's going to show up, Chuck. I mean, social media is like the wild, wild west, right? You put a call out and maybe it's, you know, the people that you would expect and then maybe you've got some outliers. So far, all of these have been peaceful, thankfully, but it can turn quickly depending on who shows up. Well, sure can, and this is stretching thin the protective intelligence services of the U.S. Marshal Service and really government across the board because everybody is keeping an eye out on the information to assist the U.S. Marshals. So this is stretching their protective intelligence resources, and it's a lot more that they have to pay attention to. And, you know, again, this is really, do, you, do these people never leave home or are they allowed to go out and live their lives? And we would think that free of harassment, especially since the Supreme Court justices should be free of intimidation, that they should be able to go out and live their lives. And unfortunately, the Department of Justice, like I said, is very disappointing that they have not stepped in here to enforce the laws already on the books and work with the state and local authorities to make sure that people are being charged in the, in the event that they're disrupting businesses. Well, the White House so far through the press secretary has stopped short of calling this intimidation or violence right now, just 
protests. Um, they have remained peaceful. Uh, real quick, Chuck, uh, Morton Steakhouse did release a statement mm -hmm. after uh, Kavanaugh's visit um, to their restaurant saying that he and other patrons were harassed. They called it selfish, void of decency. Uh, the restaurant taking some heat now for those comments. Do you expect more restaurants caught in kind of a precarious position um, to take a stand and, and prepare for this across the D.C. area? Well, I think so. You know, Marnie, the other thing is, let's think about the impact to the restaurants during the two years of COVID. I mean, the fact that they're open right now, the last thing that they want to have done to their businesses, to the employees that they've been able to bring back, is have service disrupted, have their operations disrupted. So this is not only fair, unfair to the, patri the patrons that are in there, but also to the workers who are now back making a living that want to be there. And, you know, to have, have a business disrupted in this way, it's, it's not the American way. And we need to step in here. And yes, everybody has are entitled to protest. We understand that. And for the most part, they have been peaceful. But when you're stalking these justices in an effort to disrupt their lives and intimidate them, based on a previous decision that was made, that's not right. That's not legal. Yeah, it's a complicated discussion. Uh, Chuck, as always, good to see you. Thank you. Thanks, Marnie. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.